Hello there, my name is Rachel Electric Cabal Animation, and today we're going to talk about Season 4 of Killer 7, or Caesar 7, depends where you are, the name changes. But all of that, Season 4 was sort of a drop. I mean, they barely got announced, barely got promoted by, I think, a day ago or two, and we just got it right now. But besides that, this season was great. This one of the seasons that I want to say it was perfect. But even that was sort of stranger. Even Seven doesn't really appear that much. He only appears a few moments, especially at the very beginning, because the last season was sort of the fight and all fights of that battle with him, sort of fighting the Dark Sun, the one who actually is the Crow. But we know his backstory and the reason why he doing this, who he because it because he, they told him to do it, but it's more like he had to carry the weight of his own clan. And that's sort of kind of basic, but yet very interesting, especially the battle was amazing especially the animation oh my god the animation the fight scene was incredible it's so hard to describe the words of the beauty in the fight even you pick something completely random and tell them to watch this specific season watch this fight their mouth would drop because it's just so good so amazing there is no words to describe it and that's sort of this kind of season finale battle beginning in a way because after that Seven sort of disappears because it was too injured. And you follow other side characters like the Green Phoenix, who trained 13, who has a crush on Seven. But you realize, oh, the Green Phoenix is sort of the bad guy. He is the right hand man of the Seven Assassin Guild who runs the whole place. But it's interesting enough, it's the first time you actually delve into him because you didn't understand what was the major plan. What was his main objective to especially uh, take vengeance on someone that bitch and portrayed the whole group like what was the reason and you find out what the reason is is because the main guy who killed everyone in his own family killed his village his people his own state and you understand that why he took his time why he trained 13 to be her busy right hand man to teach her oh yeah I'm the master of the blades I taught her and yet she not yet fully develop yet I can still make it more perfect more making her shine to understand how talented of the master he really is and he saw this so well that it made him sort of one of the top generals in the elite assassination group and that's sort of interesting because he gave everything till 13 was sort of injured that like given that option to save her or do his wishes to actually kill the man who murders his family his people and he decided to risk, uh, sacrifice everything, I'm so sorry, sacrifice everything for 713. You think it was a good choice or bad choice, or you think it was a kind of guilt choice? Because at the very end, we don't really know his full emotions, you know his full plan. Like, he knows he cares about 13. He made her this assassin, but yet he's trying not to get close to her, but yet he has that sort of father instincts that he's trying to deny because he knows did horrible things to this little child to make her a assassin but yet you understand why he did it but yet you don't have good response of 13 that she knows she was trained for this she knows she's a tool but yet she sort of not said anything that her emotion or holding the sword to teach her to funny kill the that's the master of all seven assassins that is sort of interesting because you see her trying to hold the sword but yet maybe she doesn't want to anymore but she does it for her master her sort of father figure at least that's her i chose to interpret it of course i love it till the very end they actually develop other side characters like the ninja who is probably the weakest assassin who became a sort of a convenience store manager. I don't think it's a manager. It's just a convenience store uh, person, cashier, who has no skill enough to kill anyone. He actually became a full assassin, and yet she he cannot get a job. If you related to this character, this side character that really didn't have much screen time, and they dedicate a full episode to you realize what they're trying to do. You're trying to connect this character, in my opinion, connect it well because everybody is sort of average of this world except for the pit assassins even you're a good assassin you're average what do you do you're average you're 
you may go to be the assassin, but you can't be it because the other people are better than you. And you understand that. It's like graduating from college. You finally have the degree, but you can't get the job you wanted. And that's what you feel. You see this sort of kind of clerk who is supposed to be an assassin, but he's not really that good of it. He's just there because he has no choice. But I love it how Seven sort of kind of prom help him sort of realize yeah, you could be assassin, but you choose to be assassin because you like to, or because you're forced to, or it make you happy. And that is sort of interesting because how Seven sees things because he was a top elite assassin who is the badass, badass, and he just so he decided to get him, get it with everything just to be a hair salonist because he makes him happy because he like cut hair. Yeah, I thought that's sort of interesting. It really show how Seven sort of touched people. While him actually realizing how he changed others. But if you love him more, you get more understanding of Seven. Like, the reason why he lost his memory is not because he hit his head. It's a little bit more than that. That he chose to lose his memories. People who drink a special potion to forget who he is. And he thought it would be happy because he doesn't know who he is. It created a new life. Technically, he did. But he can't run away from the sins he did in the past. And trying to bite in the ass, now you have to face it. Yeah, that's sort of interesting. Even that Seven is very little about this stories, you just realize how invested I am of other side characters like the Red Fang and sort of kind of semi girlfriend or wife ish that helped the Red Fang give everything to become this monster to actually kill her, kill the clan who basically disowned him. But you said that his ex-girlfriend or ex-wife had a choice to be, be with him, have a happy life, but yet chose to be the leader of her own clan. That is sort of interesting because it's always put into, oh, it's the man is idiot, the man who ruined her to make the choice of him. But I love it that she put her own, her own opinion saying, yes, but I fell in love with him first. And that is just sort of interesting. like. Fall in love with your own person, your own person you fall in love with, or do your life career that you work so hard to do, you find get, but sacrificing your own love, never be happy with another person. And that's sort of interesting. You see how she was sort of turned apart, had to basically banish her, her ex, basically trying to get away from him to have her career, and yet she feel guilty till she last minute realized what actually happened to him after she left, becoming this sort of vampire lord-ish, uh, Ball Z type of character. And that's just sort of interesting how they sort of help each other out, actually realizing, also convincing to the Red Fan to actually help what happened in Chicken Island, because one of the top seven assassins landed there to kind of kill Seven. Instead, he's threatening all the locals to make sure Seven comes back. But I love it that sort of connected to Red Fang, connected to the Green Phoenix, connected to Seven. Everything just sort of clicks. You just understand every point position, how they sigh, how they feel, how they lose certain power or not power depends where they land. This series became basically Game of Thrones anime. In fact, it became Dragon Ball Z better at Dragon Ball Z. I said it because is that good because you care even the most minor character even that you know they cannot kill one of the top seven assassins especially what happens at the end like all the character all the side characters did their best to be one of the top seven and it all failed but they give it 110 percent they know and you just felt it that well but yet i just felt happy because even, even that it has a cliffhanger because they waiting for next season that could piss me off, it usually does, but god damn, I have to admit it, this was an emotional ride. Even all the soap opera, the drama, even the drama is just sort of a little bit over-exaggerated. I guess it's how maybe uh, Chinese drama works, I'm not sure about that, you can explain to me down below if that how it goes or not. But besides that, the overacting, the little teasing doesn't really hurt the series, just make it a little more fun, at least to me. I don't know you, how you felt about this season, season 4. You were hyped, do you like it, or you feel a little disappointed because you don't have enough 7 in the show. But let's face it, it was worth it, I mean, at least to me. I don't know you, I got nothing else to say, just one question, 
how you felt about the season. Do you like it? Hit it down down below. Let me know. I got nothing else to say. Just thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and have a wonderful day. Bye.